Before we start the Q&A session, I would like to say a couple of things. We have a light lunch plan here. So after some time, we'll have lunch. And uh, before that, uh, we'll also have Q&A session. And before that, <laughs> I would like to invite a person, just like Swamiji has inspired me in uh, 1995. I attended his workshops and then I attended uh, the E-Lab. The, the, I mean, I was so lucky because it was a four-day workshop of life. And then the E-Lab was a four days and then three nights. So it was a great experience which I never forget in my entire life. And that's given me a good transformation uh, within me. Just like Swamiji has inspired, there's another person who has also inspired, especially when I was thinking, you know, this life is more about enjoying and then consuming. That's when I met uh, the president of Sanatan Dharma Foundation, who made me experience that it's not about consuming, but it's also giving back to the community. So the Sanatana Dharma Foundation, I've learned a lot, and then I have a great respect for Kalyan Vishwanathan for what he has done to the community, and what he's planning to do. One very quick thing is that when we take a lot of things for granted, and then when we don't put our neck outside, put our neck in, the, in line, he is the one who has taken up a very important challenge that needs to be addressed. So instead of me explaining what the challenge is, I request Kalyan Vishwanathan, President of Sanatana Dharma Foundation, to please come and say to you. Sutra Bhashyas. 
So he uses this analogy, famous Vedantic analogy, where a man sees a coiled rope in a corner of a dimly lit place and imagines that it is a snake. So how many of you have heard the rope snake analogy? Must have heard about it. Very famous. Now, the fear and the agitation that he, that he or she experiences in seeing that snake is as though it were a real snake. And it takes a few minutes for this person to recognize, oh my God, it is not a snake, it is just a rope. But for a few minutes, it was a snake for that person. Correct? It doesn't matter. In that moment of reaction, the reactivation, it doesn't matter at all that it wasn't a snake. It was as though it was a snake. So life mostly is as though. It occurs as though. It is a certain way. And it gives rise to a whole new realm of uh, what, what we call reality, which is uh, it, you know, Ali Shankara's distinctions Pratibhasika Satya, which is different than the Vyavaharika Satya. Anyway, I'm going to connect this thought to this presentation very briefly. Uh, please, I request your attention. Uh, everybody, this is very important. Today, we are uh, promoting, introducing an, an initiative called Ashirvada. Ashirvada. And I am requesting all your Ashirvada for the success of this initiative to begin with. So, Sanatana Dharma Foundation is completing 10 years in 2017. It came into existence in 2007. And we have done many, many different things over the last 10 years. Today is the, uh, this is the 10th anniversary of Sanatana Dharma Foundation. So we are launching a new initiative in this year. In 2017, called Ashirvada. We are celebrating uh, the 10 years of our existence by creating something new that I hope will continue for many, many more years. Okay. So, what is Ashirvada? This is the first thing. Adi Shankara, Hindu endowment for education and research in Vedanta and Dharma. That is Arshi, in, in the academia, that is Ashirvada. It took a lot of work, by the way, to create that. <laughs> so this is, today is in a, in a sense the beginning of Ashirvada. We're going to launch it formally with a, a celebratory concert very shortly. See, there is a great treasure in Vedanta and Dharma, the concepts of Dharma as elucidated by Vedanta, which is today not very well understood in the current day disciplines of knowledge, or what goes on in the name of knowledge today, especially in the liberal arts, in the disciplines of history, philosophy, religious studies, theology, sociology, psychology, medicine, anthropology, and so on. There's just a smattering of disciplines. Today, knowledge is uh, acquired and spoken about and discoursed about through these disciplines. All of it supposedly represent disciplines of knowledge. Okay? Yet, the jnana, the wisdom of Vedanta, and the world view of dharma are not really represented adequately in the modern day disciplines. The modern day language is the tongue of these disciplines. Correct? It's not there. It's, it is outside the academia. It is in the ashrams, it is in the mountain top, it is in various gurukulas, like Prasanna Trust, if you encounter a Swamiji, you get a little taste of it. Yet, for most of us, 
our experience is there is something very profound there and we get a little piece of it from time to time. But the full depth, the extent of it, the possibilities that are contained in Vedanta and Dharma as it pertains to the modern day problems of humanity such as poverty, scarcity, inequality, pluralism, cross-cultural understanding, conflict, violence, terrorism, governance, public service, obviously corruption that goes along with public service, ethics, values, education, holistic health and well-being, climate change and sustainability, discrimination, exploitation. I mean, these are the, like, a, these are the a smattering of modern day problems. In income inequality, it's a big problem in modern day discourse. So, you know, today there is a great amount of discourse in this concept called sustainability, ecological sustainability, isn't it? Yet, the word dharma, dhara yati iti dharma, itself means that which sustains is dharma. So, the previous slide. So to bring these concepts, values, the wisdom of Vedanta and Dharma in conversation with, in, in, in a samvada, in a conversation with the discourse that's going on in modern day academic environments is something that has not yet happened. Okay. And there is a profound reason for it, for why it has not happened. So very briefly, Ashirvada, the commitment of this initiative, Ashirvada initiative, is to, to begin with, create a $10 million endowment fund to reinvigorate Indian intellectual traditions. Another way of saying it is, to bring the intellectual traditions of our own forefathers in conversation with what goes on as intellectual discourses in current day academic intellectual environments. And that's a, that's a responsibility that we as the inheritors of this extraordinary wisdom have not yet systematically undertaken. Okay, it's the first point. Now, you know, you may, you may think $10 million, I mean, that's a lot of money. Yes. <laughs> yes, it is. Okay. And I think every, every big initiative must begin with a sankalpa, you know, a commitment, a promise, an intention. And this is our intention. This is our $10 million is just only the beginning. And we are going to work very diligently towards it. And we invite your Ashirvada in the form of whatever you can contribute and participate in to support this. Now, why Ashirvada? One thing we all need to understand is that the West, the Western world, the Western civilization actually studies religion. And what they study is primarily their religion, which is Christianity. So we look at Harvard Divinity School, Yale Divinity School, Princeton Theological Seminary, Claremont School of Theology, Dallas Theological Seminary, Graduate Theological Union, Union Theological Seminary. I mean, these are all examples of institutions that systematically and rigorously study the phenomena called religion. And primarily, Christian religion, Christian theology, biblical theology. This is only an example. There are hundreds and hundreds, even thousands of these all over the Western world. So if you go to Harvard, if you go to Harvard University, you will find adjacent to the Harvard Business School, Harvard Law School, the Harvard School of Medicine, a Harvard Divinity School. But you know what? Most Indians go to Harvard and they observe the law school, the school of medicine, and the business school, and they miss observing the divinity school. 
most Indians, most Indians. In fact, I was uh, encountering a parents, a couple of an elderly parents in California, who sent three daughters to UC Berkeley. Three of their daughters went to UC Berkeley. And they they have a a 12-year association with UC Berkeley. Yet, when I brought up this institution called the Graduate Theological Union, they had never heard about it. So it's possible us, for us Indians, Hindus, to go to these environments, see it right in front of our eyes, but yet miss it. Why? Because we carry a particular baggage. <laughs> you know, and our baggage is what is important to study is science, engineering, medicine, business, what will he give us a professional degree and the liberal arts is not that important. But this is how it is in India, you know. The best students go to IIT or some medical schools and the next best end up in some other schools and then the leftover go to anthropology or history or <coughs> psychology or philosophy, etc., etc. Isn't it? So, somewhere in our own recent history, we have made up as a community that this is what is important to be studied. This is what constitutes knowledge and it is measured in terms of its practical value. Can you, can you get a good salary out of such, such knowledge? And therefore, the whole world of knowledge is something that we have not fully explored. And there is another, there is something that gets in the way of our seeing these possibilities. Next. So, Sanatana Dharma Foundation, in association with some other organizations like Dharma Civilization Foundation, we have been engaged for several years in this journey. This is not the beginning. So we started, one more click, we started an initiative at a, a place called the Graduate Theological Union in Berkeley, California, at the, in the UC Berkeley campus. We started classes in 2014, we launched an MA program, a master's degree in Hindu studies in the year 2015, we launched a PhD program in Hindu studies in the year 2016. We created a center for dharma studies in the year 2016 as well, thanks to a very generous contribution by one couple in the Bay Area by the name Mrs. and Dr. Ajay Shingal, who, made, who uh, committed an endowment of $4.4 million towards establishing the center for dharma studies. <laughs> and the center for dharma studies was very broad based. We use the word dharma to include all the dharma traditions of India, which is um, Hindu, Buddhist, Jain, Sikh. And it's the nature of Hindu to be broad based, to in include everybody. So the center of dharma studies creates a space for that. Now, in 2017, we are going to focus on Vedanta and Sanskrit, a specific elements as an adjunct to that center, as an addition, a complement to that center for Dharma studies. And that is Ashirvada, that is what we are launching in 2017. We hope sometime soon we'll end up with a full blown graduate school in Hindu studies at Berkeley. You know, if, if we do this right, there will be, in a few years' time, a graduate school of Hindu studies in Berkeley which will house many, many sampradayas of Hinduism on its campus. <laughs> so, there's a lot to be said here, but how you can help is we are looking for people who are willing to put the shoulder to the wheel of this yajna and get on the committee. We want to form a core committee for Ashirvada. We would love to have people on the committee. We want to start popularizing this by conducting many, many events 
So this is uh, one of the events. Today we are launching it. Uh, people can organize in your communities. You know, there are so many communities. Ours, ours is a fragmented community. You can go, you can organize a Tamil community, you can go to a Telugu community, you can go to a Bengali community, you can go to a Marathi community. I mean, there are many, many possibilities for engaging in this conversation with many communities amongst our, uh, our people. And then please support our launch and fundraiser events in Dallas. And help connect us with high value donors. You know, all of us may know one or two high value donors. We may have a once remote connection to somebody who could possibly participate in this. We'd like to connect with them and engage them. I, we do recognize that small donations will not add up to $10 million, but we hope to inspire a few large donors who can you know, jump into this uh, project. And uh, I would request uh, Swamiji's Ashirwada for this uh, initiative. And uh, if you could kindly give us a, an endorsement letter of some kind, we would greatly, greatly appreciate that. Okay. I also suggest that you go to Dr. Sudhamurthy. Sudhamurthy. Of course, this book is one of my books. Okay. She gives a lot of education. So yeah. But now we have to convince you this type of book. Right. Wonderful. See, this is, this is how it works, right? So, just briefly, uh, we are doing a, a concert, a launch concert on September 9th in Dallas at uh, 6 p.m. at the Eisman Center for the Performing Arts. You all know Eisman Center. This concert is going to be put together by students in the, age, in, the, uh, in the age group 9th grade to 12th grade through a group called Ragradham. Ragradham. Many of you know Ragradham and they are going to perform to this, this Ashirwara concert. And all these students are in school, high school, and they have learned various Western instruments. They are all part of Western orchestras. You know, they've learned uh, violin and the cello and you know all the clarinet and the, all the Western instruments. So what we are doing is we are bringing the Western instruments together to do a, an Indian a, a mixed an Indian Western mixed concert. The concert is called Ashirwada and it's going to launch Ashirwada. The central uh, theme of the Ashirwada concert is Adi Shankara's Panchi Karana. And it's, it is going to bring to life the Panchabhutas. You know, I was actually fascinated. I didn't know if you knew that, but you began this today's uh, lecture with the shloka on the Panchabhutas. Uh, it's a coincidence. So the Panchi Karana will be brought to life and there will be a piece on each of the Panchabhutas performed by students. Um, and we'll do a, a brief presentation on Ashirwada. September 9th, uh, September 9th, 6 o'clock, Saturday. Please uh, mark this. What I uh, would like to ask you is one, you know, um, as you are hearing about this, please share with others. You know, um, if you are willing to come on board and be a member of the core committee, there are some sign-up sheets at the table. You can fill one in and we'll reach out to you and include you in, this, in, the, in the committees. Uh, and above all, you know, we seek your blessing uh, for your Ashirwada to get this thing launched successfully. Okay, so with that, I would like to ask Gopal to come back up on stage. For a